This is the first in our series of videos on section 1.6 entitled More Proofs Involving Quantifiers. In this video we're going to look at statements of the form there exists an x in u such that p of x and we're going to talk about how you give what are referred to as constructive and non-constructive proofs. So let's begin by discussing what we mean by a constructive proof of this statement. So by constructive proof we mean that we produce explicitly a very specific x for which p of x is true. And so when you're writing up your proof all you have to do is say something like choose x to be and then you're going to fill in a very specific x presumably chosen so that the p of x turns out to be true and then to finish that proof you would verify that p of x is true for that specific x. If you can do that then you've completed the proof. Here's an example of that. Give a constructive proof of the following. There exists a natural number x such that x is even and x is prime. In order to make the proof constructive you have to actually produce a specific x for which that's true and if you think about it for a moment you'll realize that x equals 2 works and so that tells you how to write your proof. You just simply write choose x equal to 2 and then you just verify that this is true for that x then x is prime and x is even. That's the end of the proof. Here's another example. Give a constructive proof uh, that there exists integers m and n such that 15m plus 12n is equal to 3. If you think about it for a moment, 15 minus 12 is 3. So if you just take m equal to 1 and n equal to minus 1, it works. And so the proof is nothing more than the following. The proof is choose m equal to 1 and n equal to minus 1. And then you just simply have to verify that this works. So you say then 15m plus 12n is equal to 15 minus 12, which is equal to 3. And there you have the proof. This brings us to the idea of a counterexample. Suppose you're interested in a statement of the form for all x in u, p of x. Um, so it's, in other words, it's saying no matter which x in u you choose, p of x happens. And suppose you suspect that that result is false. So how can you prove that it's false? Well, what you can do is you can use a constructive proof that the negation of that is true. So the negation is there exists an x in u such that the negation of p of x happens. And um, so you just have to produce a single x for which p of x is false. And that will then prove that the original uh, for every universally quantified statement is false. Now any x for which the negation of p of x is true is referred to as a counterexample for the original statement um, that you're trying to um, show is false. So all you have to do in a proof is to write something like a counterexample is provided by taking x to b and then you fill in the specific x for which p of x turns out to be false and then just verify that p of x is false for that specific x. So here's an example. Write a proof that uh, it is false that for all real numbers x, x squared plus 3x plus 1 is bigger than or equal to 0. Let's first write it in symbols. In symbols it says for every real number x, x squared plus 3x plus 1 bigger than or equal to 0 is false. So that's exactly um, this sort of a thing you're trying to prove is false. And so all you have to do is prove that there's a single x there exists a single x for which x squared plus 3x plus 1 is negative. And so if you think a little bit, you should be able to come up with 1. In fact, if you take x equal to minus 1, I think you'll find that it works. So here's how you might write the proof. A counterexample is provided by taking x equal to minus 1, because in that case, x squared plus 3x plus 1 turns out to be minus 1, which is negative. Now let's talk about what we mean by a non-constructive proof um, th of the, um, that this thing is true. Okay, so this is used when it's impossible for you to find a specific x for which p of x is true. In such a case, you're, you usually have to appeal to some other theorem, which is probably a little bit more advanced, in order to prove 
that um, there exists something for which p of x is true, even though you can't explicitly write down what it is. So here's an example of such a thing. The equation x to the 13 minus 5x to the 8 plus 97x minus 1 equals 0 has a real solution. So if we write that in symbols, that says there exists a real number x such that that adds up to 0. Now that's a 13th degree polynomial, and you're asked to find, essentially, a constructive proof would mean you could write down uh, a root of that polynomial, and it's probably too difficult for you to do that. I certainly don't know a specific x for which that's true. So that's an example of a non-constructive proof, because I claim that it, it really is true that there does exist such an x. The question is, how can you find it without actually explicitly writing it down? And the answer is, we're going to see um, a couple of proofs of it that make use of more advanced ideas. Uh, one proof makes use of what's called the fundamental theorem of algebra, and the other one makes use of a theorem, which I'm sure you've seen before, called the intermediate value theorem. So I'm going to return to this particular example um, in a later video after I tell you about these two theorems.